I'm not surprised because uh, the, the series was so popular when it first started, so I'm not surprised at the enduring popularity. At first, we were all surprised, I think, that the audience, the original audience, was so wild about it. But uh, in thinking back over it and trying to decide why the audience was so possessed by it, uh, I be went back to the early days. I was doing another show at ABC at the time. Fortunately, it was ending just at the time this show was due to start. And I met Dan, and I liked him, and, and I liked him very much. In fact, it's hard not to like Dan, at least I feel that way. And uh, I felt we were in sync, and I guess he felt the same way too, because the next day I was starting to work on Dark Shadows. I don't think anything was funny at the time it happens, but <laughs> I remember once uh, we sent the old house, which was one of our major sets, out to be repaired and they instead sent it to the dump and it was burned. And you can imagine what this did to the writers and the whole storyline. And because it would take, I don't know how long, at least a month before they could get a set together. So it sounds like a funny story, but at the time <laughs> it was anything but to all of us. And I don't know whether we think, I think Dark Shadows was a bunch of funny stories. I don't know how much I influence Dan's stories. I don't think that a director has time to influence stories, except occasionally make suggestions. But as a director, you're so busy going from one show to the next that I think uh, the writers and Dan really worked on the stories. I remember another story. Joan Bennett brought a very famous film director down. Who was it, Louis? Fritz Lang. Fritz Lang. Joan Bennett brought Fritz Lang down once, to, and he sat in the control room. He was an avid fan of the show. I mean, he was a master. He was a fab fabulous name. But he watched the show every day at home and would not be interrupted. And when he came into the control room, he sat and watched with great intensity. And then he sent me a fan letter, which I have framed. I thought, he said, you and your crew do a wonderful job, etc. And I thought that was like a tribute from a saint, you know, it was just amazing. So that very unusual people, we ran the gamut from a brilliant man like him to a teenager who was, you know, just barely out of the egg. I remember an incident with Louis Edmonds that I think he probably will remember to his dying day. We were on the stage uh, taping uh, an episode. He had left the stage. He was finished with his scene and he went upstairs to his dressing room. We progressed with the taping and expected to no problems. And the next thing we knew, Louis ran down in his undershorts yelling, stop the taping, stop the taping. He had gotten completely undressed, had forgotten he was in the next scene, and ran down terrified in his undershorts yelling, stop the taping, stop the taping. And have you, have you forgotten that, Louis? How could anyone forget <laughs> yes. that? It was funny to us. It was not funny to Louie.